Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So we've got our hydraulic cylinder rod from that big excavator to do. Um, I already got the first three done. I wasn't gonna do a video, but they're going well, and I know I said I would do it, so here it is. Um, this one is the last one to do. I've got it in the lathe, and we're gonna cut the, the eye off so that we can get the packing out, repack it, put it back on, then we'll weld the eye back on. Now the reason we're doing it this way is, is the customer I'm working with on this is a very reputable hydraulic shop. Um, we started, we teamed up recently and we've been working together for several months now and doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, their experience is when you get a piston on these older rods that don't want to come off and you force it off, you damage the piston or you damage the rod or both. And instead of risking more cost to the customer, the quickest and easiest option was to cut the eyes off, take the packing off, repack it, put it back on, weld the eye back on. So we got the first three done. This is the last one. And uh, so let's get the lathe going and show you how this is done. So the very first thing I do here is I touch off and face off the bottom of the eye. This is actually going to help me when it comes to uh, indicating and doing the work to put it back on the, to drill and tap the eye itself to put it back onto the, the rod. This gives me a flat spot when I set it down in the mill vise, just to help with the indicating. Now by center drilling it, I'm just giving myself a little more stability for cutting off that head. And now we move to the other end. And I switch out to my cutter that uses a round button insert, as Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering calls it. And we come into the weld and touch off and start taking it down.
The biggest thing is I gotta stop and check to see where my weld is. And I'm actually good. I'm just outside the weld. I just need to take this weld down a little bit here at the rod. And I wanna stay about the center of it. So actually I can come over just a little and we'll go right back to it. I'm running 250 RPM, I'm feeding this in by hand, and I'm making a huge mess. As you can see, I got coolant flying everywhere. Buddy. And that's as deep as I want to go. Now I'm just going to touch off on the rod side, make a chamfer, make sure I don't have any weld there. And I know it's hard to see with that coolant. And then on the eye side, what I'm actually doing is making a cut on the eye. So when I put this thing up in the mill, that flat we milled on the other end is perpendicular to this little step that I just turned right here. So when I go to indicate, it sits flat on that, that end, and I can indicate off of this and get my center that way. So a lot easier than fighting with it. And we'll take it over to the bandsaw, cut the head off. always being careful not to scratch the rod. That's what I use those aluminum pieces that I've showed in other videos. And I also, when I use the steady rest on these rods, I know this, I don't like doing it, but I will put a drop of oil on the, on the uh, rollers to help as well. And I haven't had any issues since I started doing that. Put it right in the band so I cut this head off. I'll line the blade up with the center of my groove there. Away we go. Just like that. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll take the rod back over, put it back in the lathe and the steady rest, and drill and tap for our threaded rod. And put our aluminum pieces back in. Slide that glam nut out of the way. And I know I've talked about this before, but I use this aluminum to not only give me a grip on the shaft, because this chrome rod is very slippery, 
but also to protect the chrome. Um, very easy to scratch it and damage the chrome and you don't want to do that. So now we're going to center drill it, then we'll drill it for our tap size, tap drill size, and then we'll tap it all in the lathe, keep it true. And I don't need to go super deep, just enough to tap in and get our threaded rod to hold. Now I did all that work at 250 RPM, we're going to switch to 63 just to do the tapping. Now we tap. Bring it in. And don't lock your tailstock in because that's a surefire way to have a problem. And reverse it and just follow it out. Simple as that. So the next step here is to take our heads and remember we milled that or turned that little flat on there. That's going to sit down in our Bridgeport vise, our Kurt vise here, and gives us a flat reference. So we know that's true to our shaft. pretty nice when I put it in there it didn't move at all it just stayed flat so now we measure our diameter of what I turned down and uh, 2752 and make sure we don't have any burrs anywhere but for the most part we should be able to come off of this distance because we're indicated to the back vice jaw 3143. Half of 3143 is 1.571. Well, 1715. So we'll go to that. Okay, so in theory, 
we should be centered this way. And the way I'm going to check that is I brought my indicator in, or my uh, edge finder into the edge or to zero off the side. I'll come in half of my 2.752 and then I'll run over and it should come in a quarter inch past half of 2.752. Okay, that should be 1.625. So we're off just a little bit, we're 20 thou off. So we'll compensate for that. We'll bring it in um, back into a zero for center and then we'll come back 20 thou to get it right on center. All right, so we're gonna drill about an inch deep. And there, we discovered how they made them originally. There is a stud they used um, I didn't see that or couldn't find that before, but that's okay. We're still we're still good and we'll probably drill a little deeper than that stud because we didn't cut it off um, But we should be all good to go All right, so I've changed out to my tap and we're gonna do each one of these individually in the mill um, That way we keep it absolutely perfect. We'll tap in the mill We'll do everything in the mill But now we got to make sure we don't bottom out and have a problem and we're close I'm gonna raise the table up a little bit to compensate so I don't have to worry and I'm not going in that deep with the threading I already slowed it down put it in back gear I'm on the slowest speed so let's see what happens and I'm slipping in my collet That's the worst part about doing some of this stuff. Is the taps are never the right size to match your collet. Or your collets are junk. In this case, I think my collet's just junk. But now we've got our tapped hole right to what I need so we can put our threaded rod and put these together. So we got the shaft up on our roller stands. I've got the threaded rod in there. I've got the other, the knuckle um, threaded and ready to go on. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and wrap this with a piece of cardstock. Um, I found that paper actually works really well because it protects the shaft, but it also starts on fire if you start getting too hot. So let's go ahead and get that ready and, and get welding. So before I cut these apart, I measured everything to make sure I got them right. And I just need to measure them exactly the same way and make sure that they are perfect. And it looks like I need to tighten it up just a little more if I can. But we're close.
this is the first full pass on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool, but you can see if we started to burn the paper a little bit, um, that's good. We're not too hot. We're not gonna burn the chrome off at that. Got good penetration. So next pass, we'll uh, maybe get up to flush or a little above, we're right where we wanna be. So let's let this cool and we'll come back to it in a little while. So it's all cooled off and uh, we'll get in here and get the next layer of weld on. So this is a multi-pass weld and that's gonna make sure this doesn't come off. I am not your father. Oh, what the heck. It's really a shame to waste all this wire, but nothing I can do with it other than using it for a filler rod maybe with the TIG. And can't say I didn't see that coming. So what we're actually using here is uh, ER70 S6 and 045. And this is a good all-around wire for a lot of different things. And we're back in business. Well, there it is, all done up. Um, the paper on there told me I wasn't too hot as I was welding, and you can see it catch on fire once in a while, and that was that was okay. It didn't melt the chrome, but we got the paper, so we knew when to let it cool. Um, I'll knock off my bolt here, clean that up, and this is ready to go back to the hydraulic shop to get the final rebuild finished. Uh, this is not a conventional way of doing this. Um, they've been in business 40 or 50 years, 
and they know from experience that if you try to get the piston off, if it fights you at all, you're going to run the risk of destroying the piston, destroying the rod, or both, and that's an even more costly fix. And so, trying to be, you know, save the customer some money, this was the quickest and, and cheapest option. And next week, we're going to take this uh, eight-inch diameter, ten eighteen, hot rolled round, and chuck it up in the lion lathe, and we're going to make some stub shafts for a. Uh, replacement for a conveyor roller, an 8 inch roller. So stick around, it'll be some heavy turning. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>